Hi all, Mike here with Cine Samples, and this is Cine Harp's walkthrough video. So, Cine Harps, this is uh, 10 years ago we released Cine Harp, which is our first library. And uh, we did that in a small studio in Manhattan. Uh, and so for our 10 year of, of being around, uh, we decided to go back to the studio, uh, go into the MGM scoring stage and record harp there. And we recorded three harps. And uh, so I'm going to go through the patches. This first one is called a concert harp. This is a traditional, uh, you know, high quality harp that you'd see on a scoring session. Uh, and we've placed the harp um, right in the center of the room so that we can get a real uh, good central sound. And, and so the harp was right here in front of this, uh, this orange cone, kind of where the violas are. And uh, like with all their instruments, we have the full mix, close mix, room, surround. But what's unique about the harp, and I've found this as a, as a, as a composer, it's nice to have immediate access to uh, the amount of perspective that you have on the instrument. You know, if you want to have it really dry and close and present, or if you want to have it roomy and, and ambient. So there's this perspective button, and... Uh, it's mapped to the mod wheel. So you can see what will happen is, if it's all the way down, we're going to get this really close presence kind of sound. As we move it up, we're very ambient and we're listening to the, uh, the surround mics only. which I think is really handy to have. And, and I know I'll probably just have it set up this way in my template uh, loaded uh, with just mod wheel control of the, of the perspective. Okay, so let's move into the settings. Let's go back to Tim's mix. Um, oh, before I do that, let's talk a little bit about the mixer presets. We have all the traditional mixer presets, uh, dry and close, roomy, ambient, all this. Uh, but then we've also incorporated two perspectives we have this one, which is uh, orchestra left, sort of simulate having the orchestra or having the harp off to the left side of the stage. And then this is one simulating it to the right. Right. Then we have a resonant uh, option, which is kind of cool. It uh, basically it's it. There's an IR in there that is simulating the sound of the resonance of the, of the harp itself. I don't know if you can hear this on the YouTube or Facebook video, but... But it's kind of a cool, cool sound. All right, let's go back to the full mix. Now, settings. Hopefully I can get through all this stuff. There's a lot to go through. So this is just the pluck patch. And so within the pluck patch, we have a gliss mode. And this gliss mode, I'll, I'll turn it on, will allow you to uh, reset the, the pedaling to however you want it. So by default, just play the white keys on the keyboard. It's set to C major. You can say C, D, E, F, G, A, B. So let's do this. Let's do a, let's do a C harmonic minor. Okay. So this is for us 
composers to figure out. And then this is what the resultant uh, pedal diagram looks like. We thought, let's put both, because uh, from what I've heard from harpists, uh, composers always get harp pedaling diagrams wrong. <laughs> I've definitely got them wrong. All right, so you can create your own glissandi. Now, um, I'm going to move on. We actually sampled all these glissandi uh, as actual performances uh, in the next patch, so I'll get to that in a second. Okay, so uh, we have also this velocity curve uh, control. And this is kind of from a feature in uh, our other piano library called Piano in Blue, which has this sort of curve control. And uh, here's bias forte. So this is makes it easier to play it loudly. And uh, this one will have more of a pluckier kind of a sound to it. It actually becomes a little bit harder to play those lower dynamics, but that's then bias piano. So these are the quieter. Just makes it a lot easier to play and dial in the uh, the exact dynamic that you're looking for, if it's a texture or something. All right. Let's go back to linear. All right, and then we have three knobs here. Uh, There's one for release mode. By default, this is normale, which is uh, just sort of a little bit of a release. It's it's. It's just enough to allow for kind of a natural feeling so it doesn't feel like everything is getting all muddy and blending together. Uh, so muted would be, say, you wanted to have staccato. Set it to muted. And by the way, I, I suggest mapping this to possibly an expression pedal or something, or, or maybe even a sustain pedal that allows you to control a uh, gradient performance. And this is let vib, or let vibe. So this is the equivalent of having the pedal all the way down. Right. That's the release mode knob. Now, round robin borrowing, RR borrowing, that's just a part of the script that's, uh, that helps you create these realistic sounding tremolos, I mean, uh, trills. So here, here's how it sounds if, there, if this feature didn't exist at all. You can hear there's just two samples that are kind of oscillating back and forth. So what it's doing is it's borrowing from other semitones from above and below, and you can set it all the way up to six for the most realistic and variation. So we recommend that you go to three for this one. And then there's a dynamic range knob, which controls exactly that. So here's the dynamic range being really high. So that means I play really quiet or actual volume of the louder notes are louder and if it's all the way down it's kind of like acts like a velocity con compressor right so that's the essentials of the uh the first patch the concert harp patch let's move on so o2 harp glissandi so here's the harp glissandi patch. This is we went and, and, and sampled a variety of, of scale types in all the keys, different lengths, uh, and different styles of playing them. Uh, and so there's we wanted to map it in a way that was really simple and intuitive. So the blue area, this determines the key that it's in, sort of the root tone of the key. Right? And then down here, the red is uh, will select the style of the scale or the, 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 the mode. So we have major, 
harmonic minor, major pentatonic, octatonic, half diminished, full diminished, and whole tone. And then for each one of those, for each scale, we have a short, which is about one beat, medium, which is about two beats, and then long, which is a, a, a four beat glissandi. So here we'll just go to major short, and so we've got And how it works is this is up, this is down, standard. Then this is up with a swirl, and this is down with a swirl. Down, up with a swirl, down with a swirl. Okay, does that make sense? Let's try uh, major pentatonic. Long. Let's do one more. How about uh, now? Some of these obviously aren't full uh, scale, so there's only three possible octatonic scales. So we have the C, the C sharp, and the D. Let's do medium. Right? Does that make sense? You spend about three or four minutes with it. It's uh, pretty easy to figure out. And hopefully you don't even have to look at the interface. Uh, that's the goal with this instrument is to not actually have to look at this thing. But if you get lost, you can always just kind of, you know, pull a drop down menu and, and select what you want. But that's always, uh, we always want to try to avoid that. So that's the basic uh, harp glissandi patch. Obviously, all the mixer presets and perspective knob all kind of apply to that as well. And then uh, we have another glissandi patch, which is all of the ad lib. Okay. And this is simple because there's no length. It's just ad lib. It's just sort of going up and down. Octatonic. And it's just going to keep looping until the end. And the, uh, the end actually has its own uh, ending. It doesn't just stop. Okay? If you want to turn that off, you can turn the release volume all the way down for people that don't want that uh, that release in there. But uh, yeah, so that's the idea for that one. Right, so I think it's, it's really intuitive, it's simple. That's the goal, hopefully you think so too. All right, let's move on. Um, we've got, there's a, another patch called Harp. Harmonics, this is an essential patch to have. And you can do, you can actually do glissandi in harmonics. I mean, it's not possible to do that in real life, but you can do it if you want. Uh, okay, so I'm going to move on. This one's cool. It's called Harp Xylophonics. So basically how that works is you, you're, you're kind of muting the string and plucking it with the other hand. Pedal buzz effects. All 
So that effect, uh, the way you get that is you have the pedal or the tuning pedal kind of halfway uh, pushed down. And that way the string has kind of vibrates against it. Kind of a cool effect. All right, and then we have uh, harp. Bisbigliandi. Bisbigliandi. I can say it. Bisbigliandi. <laughs> So these are all, they're kind of s There's three sets of them, right? You got... Because instead of having three patches, we map them to set one, set two, set three. And they all have their approximate root. You can have looped or non-looped if you wanted. Right. They all end. Okay. Moving on. Harp scrape effects. Kind of a unique thing. All right, here's a uh, harp slide effects. This one's kind of uh, kind of comedic. And we actually set it to the resonant mixer preset by default, just because it sounds cooler. Kind of fun. All right, and then we have uh, this one, Harp Thunder Crash, Palm Slap. This is sort of a standard uh, harp effect. Oh, that's loud. So the Thunder Slap, just in the, that's the green. Uh, sorry, thunder crash as you're basically taking all the lower strings and just sort of over snapping them so that they kind of vibrate against each other. Uh, and the palm slap is literally just taking your palm and just hitting the strings. So, we're writing scary music. All right, and then we have two other harps here. <clears throat> so, harp two, this is uh, it's a smaller harp. And uh, for harp two, we had that one positioned way off into the left. And uh, I'll show you here. That was right around here, kind of where this horn six stand is. Maybe a little bit to the left of that. Uh, that's harp, harp two. That's what this sounds like. Have harp three, and harp three is positioned more in the traditional location, which is um, con like the con if the conductor is right here. Harp, this harp is is positioned kind of right next to the the first cello, and it, it depending on who the engineer is, sometimes they'll be next to the cello, sometimes they'll be next to uh, the first violin. So both of these, uh, we you can swap them left and right. So, so but by default, uh, it was recorded uh, to the right. That sounds like this.
Okay. And those are the uh, sort of the main patches for Cineharps. Now, in Cineharps, we have these additional uh, extra patches, which are kind of somewhere between, you know, an organic instrument and pure sound design. This first one's called Harp Pad. This one called uh, Bass Harp. And then we have this one here. This is called Sub Pluck. It's kind of like, uh, if you guys remember Drums of War, we have this patch called Sub Booms. This is sort of the tonal version of that. It's just going to be a cool effect, especially if you're a trailer composer. Right. Hopefully I'm not blowing out your speakers. And then we have uh, cable snaps. This is kind of... Harp dubstep. We were joking about the, uh, the pedal effects and they kind of sounded like dubstep. So we made this patch, um, it's controlled by mod wheels. <laughs> basically just has a filter on the uh, map to the mod wheel. Kind of fun. All right, and then we have the sitar. Basically, it's the same sample set, but uh, just pitch bend up. And then uh, we have the banjo. All right, so that's all the patches uh, within Cineharp. We also have split patches uh, for the uh, glissandi you know, so that you can have, you know, all the different modes of the glissandi patches all as their own patch. Uh, if you don't want to kind of mess around with key switches, you just focus on playing the, the root tone. But other than that, uh, that is Cineharps. And um, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.